Hello everyone, I'm Eric from Etiquette here for another live stream this Sunday evening in Korea where I am. Uh, my name is Eric and this channel is called Etiquette and we have a live stream every Sunday and you are welcome to come and ask some questions and uh, just chat about teaching or um, anything related to English learning. So, um, wow, Bonnie Esther, you are first. Hi. So everyone, when you join, just uh, put in your name and where you're from. Uh, Bonnie Esther says, good morning, Eric. Greetings from Marlboro, Massachusetts, USA. Um, hi, Bonnie Esther. It's good to see you. Your first this time. Sir Burst. Uh, hello, sir. How are you? Hi, Sir Burst. I'm, I'm good, actually. I'm, I just did some work. And you know, sometimes when you finish doing work, you feel really well, you feel proud of yourself for completing it. And so now I can chat with you guys. Uh, do who do you, uh, do how do, uh, I, oh, my pronunciation is so bad, I'm so sorry. Hi, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Do who do you? Uh, Lisa, hi, hello. Zet, Zet again, hi. Eric, how are you? I'm doing really well. Um, Actually, um, I had a good weekend. Um, the, this past week, I've been working very hard. I've been going to the gym. I've been trying to eat well. So in in general, I'm doing really well. To how do you? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm from Turkey, um, by the way. Um, Merhaba, it's nice to have you. So many great Turkish viewers. Abila Shah, hi. Abila Shah, I just saw your, uh, I think a week ago, you left me a message on the Etiquette group page or the page where you said um, you would like to have an, um, a video about Mother's Day activities. Well, I'm proud to say a couple of minutes ago, I finished filming um, the video on Mother's Day activities. Um, this Tuesday, I will share a video, um, a video on Mother's Day activities, and I will also be giving you resources and worksheets that you can use in your class. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I'll have to edit it tomorrow and then send it out on um, Tuesday. I'm Sebast. Uh, greetings from Turkey. Like I said, I'm an English and Spanish teacher. Wow, Sebast. You're able to speak a couple of languages. I'm so proud of you. Abila Shah from India, of course. Sebast, your vibes uh, videos are very helpful for me. I'm grateful. That's great to hear. Sebast, if you've got um, any, if there are some videos that you would like to see or some topics that you would like me to talk about, please put it in the comments. Tatia, uh, hello from Georgia. Hi, Tatia. It's good to see you. Lisa, good evening. Kathmandu, Nepal, Nepalese. Oh, I'm so, I'm so in the mood for Nepalese food. Natalia, hi, Privyet. Hi from Ukraine. Ah, oh, uh, Natalia, you are one of my favorite people because um, on the Etiquette group, um, if you guys haven't seen it, you can see it in the uh, the Facebook group. Natalia has been posting so many great content, uh, so so many great articles and videos. Natalia, I'm I'm really happy. Thank you so much. Uh, Farhana, hi from Bangladesh. Hi, Farhana. I was uh, actually yesterday, I went bowling with two of my friends. The, the one friend of mine is Shohag. He's from, he's also from Bangladesh and also another friend from Indonesia. Uh, Juho, it's a made up name. Um, there's no correct pronunciation, so don't worry. Thank you, Juho. Uh, uh, Oi Nam, hi. Abila Shah, I asked some ideas for Mother's Day. Right, and uh, that will come out this Tuesday. I filmed the video. Um, I just need to film some extra videos of me working. Uh, we call it B-roll. B-roll is like extra videos. Then edit everything together and put it out and hopefully it's useful. And she says, wow, that's a nice heart. Salwa, hi from Egypt. Mrs. Abula, today is a sunny day. Yeah, um, actually I've gotten into this habit. Every Sunday, if, if it's possible, I've been going with friends to go and kick a football around. Now, I'm not very good at football because growing up, I played rugby and some other sports and I played a lot of chess. I never played football, but it's so good getting outside, walking, getting into the sun, getting some vitamin D and kicking a ball around, you know, even at my age. So um, I, I'd like to do that some more. Um, and another Ukrainian. Hi. I'm really, you know, guys, I'm having such a tough time deciding what to do this summer vacation. Um, I've got two options, either go to the beach or go to Ukraine. 
but I'm not sure about Ukraine because um, to uh, right now I live in Korea. And if you want to leave Korea and come back, you need a re-entry permit. But they don't ha give those to anyone. So um, I'll see. If it's possible, I might go. Otherwise, I'll just stay here and go to the beach. Salwa, hi. Yes, greetings from Egypt. Hi, Anna. Good evening, Eric. Hello, everyone. Hi, Anna. Good to see you. Uh, earlier, Anna was asking me some questions on Instagram. You can check out my Instagram if you want to. I just put out a couple of stories every now and again. Omar, thank you, Miss Salwa, for the invitation. Yes, guys, thank you so much for inviting other people to come and chat. Um, by all means, if uh, you have a friend or another teacher or an English learner, um, invite them. And if you have a question, please ask. Um, Oi Nam Oi. Um, hi from Thailand. I just spoke to another friend and they said uh, the, the place they want to live is Thailand. Uh, they're from Korea, but they've, they've spent some time, especially in the south um, uh, of, uh, what is it called again? The south of Thailand. Um, and, 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 Ah, it's on the tip of my tongue. Can't remember. But she said she would love to stay there. Hi from Cambodia, bro, son. Hi. I'm Ahmad. Greetings from Egypt. Uh, another Peruvian, Leslie. Hi. Camelia. Takang, I would like you to give me some lesson plan ideas for grade seven to grade eight. Well, recently, I think one of the one of the questions I get asked a lot by teachers is, Eric, can you give me a curriculum or Eric, can you give me a list of lesson plans? And I remember feeling the exact same way. Um, I remember when I first started teaching, um, basically I had to teach. Uh, I was given an open plan and said, Eric, just teach. And it was so overwhelming. I, I just thought, listen, just give me an idea. Give me a plan to work from. Um, because um, it's, it's very tough coming up with ideas of your own. And I get asked this question a lot. Eric, do you have a curriculum for me? And the answer is I don't. Um, and there are a few reasons for it. But my advice would be is to go and find an English book. Go and find. There are so many great ESL books out there that have been created by companies that specialize in it. They get the best professors, the best writers and artists to create these books. So what I would suggest is go to a library or go to a bookshop, uh, buy, uh, look through all the books, find something that you're comfortable with, something that you think you can work with the, with the right mix of grammar and um, material for the students and activities that you enjoy or writing. Take that book and then use that series of books as your curriculum that's that's the best advice i can give because each teacher is different and each classroom is a, a different way um i would say that perhaps a year or two from now i might create a basic curriculum for um, teachers if they wanted to use that but right now that would be my my tip to you um takang i hope that helps lisa any pre-service teachers here anyone here pre-service I think there are a few that are here. Um, I, I get so happy when I get teachers that right before they start teaching because it shows that they're very interested in the topic and they want to learn. Gisela, hello everyone. Sebast, I have a challenging question. I have some challenging questions. Sebast, by all means, I'll do my best. But um, yeah, just know uh, I, I'm just trying, you know, so don't take my word for everything. Hi, I'm from Turkey also. Nora, of course you are. Hi, Nora. Magda Magdalena, hello from Mexico. Hi, Mag Magdalena. It's nice to have you. Some of my, um, some of my um, favorite friends that I've met and people uh, on Etiquette uh, are from Mexico. So you're so welcome. Hello from Bolivia. Hi. Uh, Arturo, good morning, Eric from Honduras. Hi, Arturo. Good to see you. In my country, I cannot test students because of the pandemic, and I just give them assignments for evaluation. What kind of assignments should I form to find out if they understand the lesson? A uh, good question, Sir Best. So obviously, you've got um, when you make a, a lesson, uh, you have some things that this you want the students to be able to do. So let's say you do a lesson about 
um, travel, right? So you have a lesson about travel. Um, so you want the students to be able to use some travel related vocabulary. You want them to be able to ask questions or answer basic questions or whatever your, your goal is for that lesson. Then you want to test and make sure that the students are able to do it. Maybe write down a few questions. I would say write down three questions. What are three things that I want my students to be able to do? And then at the end of the test, have some way to test them in the assignment to see if they reach that goal. Um, I hope that helped. Do you know copy paste or plagiarizing attempts? Um, yes, uh, uh, fortunately, you know, you've got Google and there are lots of uh, other programs to help teachers in case students try and plagiarize. Precious, hi, Miriam, hello from Iran, Mr. Mario. Hi, Mario, are you doing okay? Mario, Was uh, you said you had some problems before. Um, and this is a difficult thing to talk about. I think for many teachers that are in a difficult, um, so Mario told me to give some background. He said that he, he's basically, he's working at a school where it's very difficult. And my advice for teachers is, and this, this might be a bit controversial, but I think you should go to where you're happiest. And the problem is that, um, Oh, of course, I tell this, uh, I try and give advice to make it easier for teachers to control the class or to plan their lessons or to teach. But sometimes you are at a school where it is just you hate going to school. And instead of trying to push through and become tougher, I would say find a better school if it's possible within reason like if you live in a certain place and you've got some options and it, it is possible for you find a better school because it's not your job to suffer uh, if 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 you're able to move uh, that's that's the first advice and if it's not if you're not able to move then you can start implementing some of the strategies hi everyone if you have any questions put it in the comments below i think i'm doing okay on time by the way you can probably see that the lighting is better because i just filming two I just finished filming two videos. The first one that will come out this Tuesday, hopefully, is the Mother's Day activities video. And then two weeks from now, I've got the um, using um, L1 in the classroom. Many teachers have asked me for that, so I did a video on that. I sh just shot that now. And I used this ring light, and I just put it here, so now I look a lot pr prettier. Um, also, I put on some foundation because... Uh, <laughs> It's so funny. So when I shoot, I put on a little bit of foundation because I'm getting old. I've got lots of wrinkles and um, my skin isn't great. Uh, and then uh, so I was uh, just before this, I was video calling my parents and my mom said, Eric, your skin is so nice. I said, thanks, mom. It's uh, because of the makeup and the lighting. OK, uh, Bandar. Hi from Saudi Arabia. Good morning, Miriam. Good morning, uh, Lisa. Very ser serendipitous. I found this literally just handed in my English lesson plan assignment. Okay, um, Lisa, what what was it about? I think it's it's so good when you're studying to become a teacher to practice doing um, lesson plans because you've got to make many of them. Um, with lesson plans, I've I've always told myself, you know, we try and overthink the things because we try and find out everything we want to do. And the, the best way, you, you know, we try and cover all the categories, the goals, the learning standards, or whatever it might be. Um, but really make it simple for yourself, you know, break it down into, you, you know, where you explain what you're going to do during class. Just have a small breakdown of the idea of um, what you're going to do in each section. I think that's really good for you to practice. So, but hey, hi, everyone. Elizabeth, hi there. And the hand clap. Uh, Intasar, hello. And then we've got, you're from Jordan. Hi. I was busy. Anna, I can't read that. Where is my, I, I was taking notes on how to learn the Cyrillic alphabet. Hi, I need to learn how to read it better, especially before I travel. Pierre Willifier, greetings from your mother's brother in South Africa. So uh, this is, uh, hi, Uncle Pierre. Um, so this is my mom's, um, this is my mom's, oh, there's something, let me see what's happening here. Uh, this is my mom's brother, and he's visiting her in um, in South Africa. 
Uh, is everything okay, guys? I've got my phone here. I just saw something happening with the Facebook feed. Let me just double check if everything is working. I just want to make sure. Ah, oh, is it working? I think it's back live. Yes, there we go. Okay. Uh, uh, hi, Uncle Pierre. And uh, then Mary Costa. Hi, everyone. A big hug from Uruguay. Hi, um, um, Mariella. Hi, Mariella. Intersar, um, would you give us more tips to use during classes to reduce teacher talking time, please? Uh, great question, Intersar. Uh, well, obviously, as a, as a language teacher, your goal is to get the students to speak as much as possible. The worst thing is when you're just talking and talking just like I'm doing now, you're just droning on and the students get very bored. Uh, the best way to do this during class, um, I feel, is um, I like to do a lot of pair activities and group activities. And when the students do that together, so first you teach them what you want to teach them. You practice some examples with the students. Uh, you let them practice with each other to check if the students understand. And then you put them into groups or to small uh, into pairs to practice uh, a conversation, a dialogue, or to create some kind of role play. Um, once, or, or you can ask them, you know what I did earlier um, during last week? Um, the students have to do a presentation. So I asked them, um, in groups, I want you to come up with 10 ideas for your presentation and uh, 10 really interesting ideas. And then um, once they're done with their activity, um, or if you're busy with younger kids, it could be something similar to, you know, or, or a game or something, you do a review with them and you get them to practice with each other. You say, okay, you two, can you quickly do um, uh, a question for me? Or you, can you do uh, a couple of examples for us? You know, And um, if it's with younger students, you can constantly ask them questions during class. And I think this should be second nature to most teachers is while they're teaching or while they're reviewing, to ask for um, to ask the students questions because you're checking their understanding and also you're giving them an op opportunity to speak so that you can also fix some mistakes that they make and uh, you know it also takes up uh, it gives them more student uh, or learner talking student talking time so that's one way of doing it is constantly asking your students questions or allowing them to uh, present in front of everyone. And here's my dad. Hi, dad. Nice to see you. Um, and Salwa, how can I integrate the four main skills of language at the same time? That's going to be very difficult to do speaking, listening, writing, and reading at the same time. Uh, the best, the only way they can do that, I mean, you can't listen and speak at the same time, but you can co cover all four in the same lesson. So, for example, if you are instructing the students and you're doing examples on the board, you know, they're reading, you put it up there and you're speaking, so they're doing some listening. You can ask them to, um, uh, so you show it to them first, and then after that, you put it off and you say, okay, now I'm going to read a sentence to you. I want you to write down some important words. Then they write down some important words, and then you ask them, okay, um, Whatever you wrote down, I want you to create your own conversation with a partner. It doesn't need to be 100% the same, but you can do something like that. Well, I actually, I really like that idea. Okay, so first you show the students words uh, and that the students can read. You can ask the students to read it for you instead. That's something I like to do. In most cases, the first skill that students learn is reading. So instead of you reading uh, whatever you show your students, always ask your students to read. Um, so, okay, read some vocabulary, then turn it off and then say you're going to, or vocabulary or sentences, or um, it could be a whole paragraph. And then you tell the students, okay, now I want you to write down and then you read some vocabulary or you read the sentence or you read the paragraph and ask the students to write down as many as they can as they can hear, and then they have to use whatever they found with their partner and create a story. I like that. That's a good idea. So um, uh, back to your question, Sawa. It's not possible to do everything at the same time, but you can spread it out over a lesson with different activities. Lisa, in my uni course, um, when we're asked to make lesson plans, they're so convoluted. Great word, convoluted. You have to write so much theory, pedagogy, and teaching strategies. And you know, it's I, I really dislike that. I, I know that it's necessary to understand all of these things. 
I know that, uh, you know, as a professional, you're supposed to understand it. But I feel like they, they are, uh, um, you know, th th they should teach the basics first and make sure that you're a capable teacher before going into um, exact theory. Um, I had this issue with uh, some of my professors, too, where, um, you know, it, during assignments, they would give these assignments on these very niche and specific topics, um, you know, that might not. Uh, that aren't that important. Instead, they should focus on the 80%. You know the 2080 rule, the Pareto principle, where I think it's the Pareto principle, where you should focus on the 80% of things instead of the 20% of things. So as teachers too, we should focus on the things that are very important instead of the specific things that don't really matter. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, by the way, guys, how are you doing? If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Um, I was so quick to get started. I forgot to put my water with me. This is about the time I would take a sip, but I will push through without drinking water. Um, yeah, um, on a personal note, hi, Eric, this is Moni from Bangladesh and other Bangladeshi. Hi, Moni. Um, on a personal note, um, this last week was kind of difficult. Um, I think all of us, you know, um, we have some things that we struggle with in life. Uh, it could be professional or personal, usually personal. Um, and we go through it. And for myself too, you know, I'm not going to go into specifics, but I was also going through some difficult things that, uh, you know, it, looking back, it might seem it's, it's insignificant. But at that moment, when you go through these difficult things, you know, it, it's not a fun time. And I was talking to a friend about it and he gave me some advice. Obviously, he gave me some specific things that I could do. Some He gave me some valuable advice. But the one thing, he said this one thing that just uh, a switch went off in my head. Um, and it was, um, Eric, it's so easy to turn to the dark side. It's so easy to become negative or to, to focus on things that are bad. Uh, or, you know, um, how it might affect you negatively. And he said, turn to the light, turn to the light. Now, you can take this religiously. You can take it like Star Wars, the light in the dark. Uh, but for me personally, it, it it just meant, you know, try and focus on the, the positives and the good things in life. And um, if you start focusing on those again, you know, things will improve. And that is something that that is very important to me. So um, my message to you this week would be, you know, whatever you're going through, whatever, whatever problems you might have, all good things, you know, um, just remember to turn to the light and focus on the good things, um, uh, focus on the positives and try to make the best out of your situation, you know. Um, sometimes it's good to breathe and think that, you know what, everything will be okay. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for my friend for suggesting that. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, so the best, uh, what method should I use to reveal students' communicative abilities more? Um, I think that most teachers within a couple of minutes, they'll they'll know what a student's ability is. Uh, the best thing to do is just to chat with them. You know, uh, when you do road call or something, for example, you can have some chats with the students. Oh, how are you doing today? Uh, so you you start with a very basic question. You're like, how are you? What did you do yesterday? How was lunch? You know, um, uh, uh, what are you watching on TV? So you start with a very simple question. And if they answer it and uh, sufficiently, then you can try and ask them a more difficult question very quickly and then make a note of it as you're doing row call. If you wanted to do a more in-depth one, you can make a list of questions and then take students for a couple of minutes and then go through it. But that takes quite a bit of time. So I would say just ask them a couple of questions. That's the easiest way. AK Gamer, hi, AK47, nice to have you. What are you playing these days? Oh, man, uh, playing games, it's so dangerous to me because I become so addicted to it. Marie, my question is how to keep kids, uh, keep kids interested when we do distance learning? I don't get enough responses. Um, I think set them up with easy questions first and, um, you know, 
praise them when they answer. Uh, if a student answer, ask them more questions about it. Also, make a, use questions related to their lives, you know. Ask them to share things that are going on inside their lives, you know. Um, like, oh, what's going on in your life? You know, uh, wh what did your mom do yesterday? Or, you know, what is something funny that happened to you recently? Um, just ask fun, interesting questions. And when you start with simple questions, build it up. And also heaps lots, uh, heap lots of praise on them, Mary. Uh, for Kito, hi, Eric, my dear. Always a pleasure to hear. Um, for Kito, thank you so much. So like I was saying before, I, was, I wasn't feeling great. And uh, she said, Eric, I hope you're doing well. And I said, thank you, for Kito. I really needed to hear that. And um, yeah, so for Kito, thank you for the great support. And ah. Uh, Hello from a Russian girl living in France and teaching English. Wow, and there's so much going on. I feel like a lot of our Russian viewers are teaching in other countries too. I find it very interesting. Well, wow, Anna, you you've moved a lot. Wow, uh, it must be very interesting. I was I was listening to this this podcast where a guy said he was living in the south of France, and he he um, considered he he's an entrepreneur. And he considered actually moving and living there, um, you know, for, forever. And I was like, oh, that'll be interesting to see. R uh, Rinku, hi, bro, uh, bro. Hi, good to see you. Lisa, um, I made three 75-minute lessons for a year. Uh, seven class, focusing on studying the book Once by Morris Gleitzman. Okay, that sounds like a very interesting class. Um Three 75-minute lesson plans for a year seven class. Okay, well, that sounds perfect, you know, especially if you cover a book and it's a book that's really interesting to the students. I, I definitely can see how that is made. 75 minutes is a, is a long time, though, even for a year seven class. But, Lisa, I'm sure you did, you did it very well. Um, thorough planning helps reduce teacher talking time. Uh, what is that great um, that thorough planning prevents... Um, what is what is that saying? Uh, something planning prevents future disappointment. Oh, look that up. Somebody, what is that expression? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, definitely we should uh, plan better. But you know what? Um, I think you know as as I'm getting older, or um, I uh, I think maybe I'm just getting so used to my classes. Um, I make sure uh, because I've taught it so many times. You know, I just make sure uh, what the key points are that I want to teach. And then because I've already got the system in place and I've got this routine with students, you could give me any topic and I could teach it blindfolded. And I think um, it's great as a teacher to find your rhythm, find your teaching rhythm so that you can teach these things. Mr. Mario says, um, Eric ha had part in a video about messy kids. You got really angry, like how to teach respect at school. If you don't respect, sign the book minutes and the parents present also sign. Very true, Mario. Um, I think it should be a collaborative um, approach where teachers and parents work together with the students uh, and the students understand what is expected of them. Renee, you graced us with your presence. Hi, Renee. Miriam, how can we keep students motivated in online classes. Uh, like I said before, focus on your students, get them to participate, engage them, ask them questions about their lives and get them to share, you know? And once they start sharing things from their lives, they will feel like they can join. You know, uh, there's there's something beautiful about a student getting students to open up uh, because once they do that, they feel like, wow, you know what, um, I want to, I want to do more in this class because the teacher cares about me and they allow me to share more of myself. Mr. Mario, uh, the student, uh, they were students that were expelled for bad behavior. Uh, yeah, it's so difficult, you know. Um, I feel so sad for some of those students, you know, because you know they're struggling with things in their lives and then they take it to school and then at school they get expelled. So that's very difficult, Mario, to hear. Um, Anna, uh, I got a class at the end of the year. They have to take an exam, but the level is so low. I don't know what to do. Um, okay, uh, well, 
uh, you've got to prepare them as best you can. Uh, if their level is very low, just make sure you teach them the basics. Try and get them to make it through the exam. Uh, like I said, focus on the 80%. Don't focus on the 20%. Uh, so whatever you have to teach them, make sure that you get them to understand the basics. Because I would rather teach my students enough to get by then try and teach them everything, and then they they not they don't know as much. So rather focus on the basics. Uh, you know, even if they pass pass with a little bit, it's it's still a pass. So try and get them to pass them. Lisa started with some WW content to content to context and had them reflect on why authors write fiction about it. Used activities like think, pair, share, character and story arc worksheets, and set creative assessment tasks. Lisa, you're already such a professional. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I, I like the idea. I mean, when I was studying and I was at school, we did so much World War II content. And a great way to do that also is to introduce uh, a visual elements to show them what these people were going through to set them up for understanding that. Um, you know, and also even if it's just watching some scenes from movies, you know, to give them an idea of what these characters went through. Uh, very great ideas here. The think, pair, share, great character and story arc worksheets and set as creative. Uh, I'm very interested to hear what assessment creative work will you do with them? Or what was your plan for that? Mario, the two smileys. Rinko, hi, bro. I already said hi, bro. Anna, you don't have to use all four skills in one lesson, but you can work on two. That's right. You don't need to do all of them in one lesson. Uh, Miriam, how can we keep motivated? Uh, okay, Miriam, like I said, you know, make them share. Anna, for example, if it's an output skill, lesson speaking or writing, you can work on those two. Very true. Right. So uh, output, it's what the students can do. Hi, uh, is it Vita? Ah, I can't read. I need to study more. I, I studied... Maybe two weeks ago, I was working with the Cyrillic alphabet, and then I got very busy. I went on a trip. No, maybe three weeks ago, I was studying. And then I got very busy and kind of stopped. Oh, three weeks a month? Oh, time's just flying. So, Best, uh, I have a foreign student, and she tries to speak by translating direct to, directly in a native language. So, uh, cannot understand at times. What strategy should I use to solve that? Wow, that's a great question. Yeah, it's very difficult when students try and directly translate and use that. Uh, wow, I can't think of an answer right now. Uh it's because I'm thirsty, I think. Um, yeah, so getting uh, obviously the students should be shouldn't be translating directly. Um, I would try and motivate them, give them examples. So if they did make the mistake of translating something directly, just go to them and say, listen, um, try not to di directly. You need to learn that you need to study the English way to say this. So give them the example and then ask them to use the example back to the to you. So I think that's the easiest way is by starting to teach them what the correct way to say it would be. Um, and other strategies, um, yeah, so uh, translating apps are getting better, but if they do it word by word, that's wrong. So if they have to translate something, ask them to, write, uh, to translate the full sentence and then give them a more natural way to say it in English. Uh, I hope that helps. I don't think that's the best advice I can give, but that's all I've got right now. So, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Sebast. Uh, Anna, but as a goal, uh, you have one skill, for instance, for an input skill, you work on reading as the main goal and listening as the subsidiary goal. Great advice, Anna. You should be sitting here instead of me, especially now that my voice is getting hoarse. Hello from Russia. Hi. Rinko. Okay, Rinko, too many times. Now I've got to put you in a timeout. Oh, too much. Okay, uh, where were we? Okay, guys, so if, if we call that spam, and I think he was spamming a bit too much. Oh, where am I? Um, yeah, how are you guys doing? Uh, here we go. Uh, 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 uh. Great advice, thank you, Anna. Uh, so I'm gauging from response, uh, and that, lesson plans in practice aren't so intense when you're actually teaching. I sincerely hope. Yes, uh, Lisa, definitely. I, I mean, listening plans, I think the main reason we have them is when, um, you know, when they come and they check your files, right? So if you have your lesson plan sorted, and it, it sounds to me like you're a person that, you know, 
takes care of your paperwork. Once you've got your paperwork and your filing done, you know, then just write a short note on what you want to teach them or just go through what you want them to do. So you can reflect back. Uh, so, uh, of course, you've got your year plan. You've got your um, plan for each semester. And then you've got your weekly plans and your daily plans. Well, what I would do is just with your weekly plan uh, for each day, just write down what do you want to achieve with your students. And that should be enough. I think once you've set up your routine and the way that you structure your class, it'll be way easier and you don't have to go through your lesson plan like that. It's hard to follow, but that's the only way to succeed. Uh, okay, here we go. Bonnie Esther, per your recommendation, I started reading the book you shared about anxiety last week. We all might struggle with this. Thank you for sharing your heart. Uh, yeah, Bonnie Esther, um, I'm glad that you started reading that book. It helped me a lot. Uh, it, uh, the book Bonnie Esther is talking about is how to stop worrying and start living uh, and start living by, uh, what's his name? I was saying it last week again. Uh, he he also wrote Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie, right? Yeah, Dale Carnegie. He wrote that, and it's such a good book. With I, I listened to the audiobook, uh, and it's just so great the experiences and the stories they share. Sawa, so, uh, your way is very powerful and positive. Never be negative, please. Uh, I'll definitely try. That's right. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the sense of things, but we have to be positive and try again. So true for Keto. Um, uh, Aman Marat, uh, Aman Marat, hi, Aman Marat, hi there, Eric, hi, uh, Anna, south of France, that's where I live, you're so lucky, Anna, um, I, I really need to get, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult for me, because, you know, you get so in your comfort zone, and I always talk about traveling and places I want to go, but I'm also, I love routine, so what I tend to do is, you know, I say, oh, I have to go and travel. And then I travel for a little bit. And then I just want to come home and get stuck in my normal routine again. You know, just um, do my daily work, uh, work. And I think what I, it, it's, it's, it's very important for us to push ourselves and go and see some things. So that's why I'm trying to look towards traveling this summer. Uh, next, um, this uh, January and February, I'll travel home, but I'm, I don't have any plans for this summer vacation yet. I want to start teaching online. Could you give me some suggestions? Uh, um, Aman, uh, Aman Marath, um, just Google some um, uh, places to work. I know there are many companies and I'm not sure what their requirements are. There are some um, most of them require a native speaker, uh, but there are some sites where you can do this. Um, I haven't, I only teach for my university, so I'm not sure um, of where to teach or how to do that. So I think the best way is just to, to, um, to look it up on Google and, um, you know, try your best on there. Natalia, you say, oh, I had a difficult week as well. Um, anything you want to talk about? Anything you wish to share? By the way, guys, um, your questions or your things, you, you don't always have to, it doesn't always have to be about teaching. If you just want to share something that happened in your life, I do it here all the time. Um, I'm so grateful for you guys out there because I can share some of my emotions and what I, what I go through. Obviously, I'm not going to give you all the specifics, but you know, you can, you can share things that you have trouble with, you know, and it's it, just to get it off your chest and Putting it out into the world is better than keeping it to yourself. Um, Sebast, lastly, can you recommend some offline activities? Thank you so much for your recommendations. Stay safe. Okay, so for offline activities, um, I've actually, um, one of the things I'm proudest of, oh, oh, I should go to my channel. One of the things I'm proudest of is, or not proudest of, I think it might be very useful, is I've got this playlist on, um classroom games and i actually i love this playlist because it's got 52 games um and energizers that you can use in your classroom so i would definitely say um try and check this out i'm i'm really proud of it and maybe you can find some good ideas in there i'm going to paste it in the comments and check it out
I think, uh, Sir Best, maybe you can find some good ideas in there. Anna, uh, here in France, they're required to plan sequences. I think that's a good idea. So you don't write one lesson plan, but you prepare four to nine lessons in advance connected with each other. I find it difficult to do because I'm not used to planning more than one or two lessons in advance. Okay, so all these pl pl uh, lessons should be connected somehow. I think the easiest way to do that, you know, is to think of like some kind of story. Okay, so you're starting to teach this activity with this grammar and um, this um, topic, right? And then try and get it to flow into the next activity where you can start the next activity by saying, okay, guys, in the last lesson, we learned this, but now we're going to start this way. And maybe you can connect the two by finding some similarities or some contrasting ideas between the topics or the grammar that so that you can say, okay, well, last time we did the past tense, this is the past tense for this, but now we will focus on this tense and we say it this way. Okay, so I, I think that's one way to do it, maybe. Uh, Salwa, role play and work in pairs, groups, and many activities can be used to reduce TTT. Exactly. Miriam, how can we make, uh, Sorry, how can we make a five-year-old hyperactive student more focused? Um, I think you need to control his energy. So once they get into class, you know, obviously you're going to have your rules, but have fun with the student first. Let them come in and play some kind of, if you're one-on-one -on -one with a student, it's easy. Just play games with it. Uh, if, if they're a group class, you know, when they come into class, have a fun, energetic game to play with them to, so that they can expend some of the energy. It could be a chant. It could be some kind of fun game or group activity. Um, uh, and then just get them to expend their energy. And then once they've played that game, now you say, okay, guys, you've expended it. Now relax. Let's do the teaching part. After that, let them play again. I'm actually, so I've got two, uh, I just shot two videos. Uh, for these next two weeks. My two videos that I want to do for the two weeks after that is how to teach young learners, um, because I've had many questions about that, and also how to teach phonics. And I think these two videos can be very useful, but now I've got two weeks to kind of like plan them out and to write out the script. So um, if you can wait a little bit, Maybe I'll bring out some of these activities and ideas for teaching young learners. Uh, Arturo, could you please recommend me a website where I can find nice spelling activities? Um, Arturo, I can't think of one right at the moment. Uh, one of the videos I want to make, though, is though I, I saw this um, on Facebook. I saw this um, place where uh, they said the 15 best websites for teachers. I'll share that soon, too. Uh, maybe I'll share that soon. Sorry, uh, sorry uh, Arturo, um, I'll definitely make something on that in the future on good websites to use. Anna, you're learning Russian? Uh, yes, I want to. I really want to learn some more Russian because I plan on traveling to Russia and Ukraine in the future. Um, so I need to learn the Cyrillic alphabet and I need to learn some Russian to go and travel. Uh, it's really pl a plan for me. Uh, Lisa, for the assessment, first divided the class in half. One made a protagonist, the other a story setting. Then I pair them off and they have to make a story. I let them pick from a number of mediums. Wow, how fun. Um, uh, I think, you know, when you put the students half and half, um, they might come up with the same protagonist or, you know, they're going to have the same one. So maybe, uh, you know, you could um, let them write down a list. Like um, uh, I said during my class, I said, um, think of 10 good ideas for presentation. And each group came up with 10 ideas. And then I asked them, what is what is a great idea that you thought of? What, what is a great idea? So that gives them some options. So instead of making it one half of the class, maybe make it um, three groups and tell them to come up with five protagonists and then put the other half into three groups and say come up with five and that way you know you're going to have different ones but i really like that idea of splitting them up um how do you see your channel and community grow five years from now just curious this is a fun question natalia i love asking this question because as you guys know i like to plan things out and i do have a strategy um, 
And since you've asked this question, now I can I can tell you. Okay. Now with Marvel, they they've got the phases, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three. Okay, I've got a similar plan. Um, I I don't have the specifics yet, but I do have an idea of what I want to do. Okay, so now I am at phase one. Phase one is just creates a library of content. So uh, all these questions that teachers have, all these problems, um, activity videos, I just want to make a big um, library of content so that I can help teachers out there. And it will also increase uh, my subscribers and viewers a little bit. Um, once that is done, uh, I plan for, uh, I need time. Um, so I've made um, enough content for one year. I'm going to release a book and enough content for one year. And it's more for English learners and teachers can use it too, based around the book. So for one year, I'm going to upload all these videos. Hopefully after summer, I can upload one year of content and then just do my live streams and relax. During that year, I want to work on a course. This course is going to be my master course on classroom management. It's going to be called Classroom Situations. And I want to go through specific scenarios for teachers and students so that when a teacher wants to, when someone wants to become a teacher and they don't, you know, they're nervous, they don't know what to do in these exact situations, I've got. Uh, episodes and course uh, in this course I've got episodes for each way and I'm going to get some some actors to work with me um, you know well just young students to show how it's done I'm going to show how to teach things it's going to be very specific for teachers so I've got one year to make the course and then I'm going to release the course uh, in 2022 uh, I'll release the course and um, I'll also make some videos on YouTube to basically promote the course and to show those things. Um, once that's finished, uh, I think that will take about six months or so. I also want to do some content. Then I will start doing some content on a lot of people have asked me uh, on a curriculum. So I might do a, a, a curriculum. And then after that, uh, sorry, this is taking long. I know you guys are probably bored. My final plan for the channel is once I've got all this content, once I've got the English learning tool, um, and once I've got this, uh, my master course done, then I want to find an apartment. I want to get a dog. Uh, I want to get married. And then I want to, to build a studio. And I want to do content on English, uh, on teaching stories. So basically, Every day I could go online and I could find a story of a teacher talking about their experience in class or a story, a, a, a new story that relates to teaching. And almost every day or every day I want to, I can just, I've got the studio and I can quickly record a video on a very important topic for teachers or a funny story about teaching or what happened to a teacher, what's going on in teachers' lives. And I can share my opinion and talking about the story. And that is my final goal. Natalia, thank you for asking. And everyone, sorry for boring you with this answer. But phase one, create a library of content. Phase two, um, put out content uh, for one year um, for English learners. And during that one year, I can work on my master course. Year three, release the master course and also perhaps um, some material and um, videos on um, uh, building a curriculum and actually helping teachers with a set curriculum or book that they can use. Um, then I guess it's four. It's, uh, yeah, get my life in order, start a family and shoot almost daily videos just about teaching stories. What do you think, Natalia? Is that is that a good idea or not? Uh, I don't know. But um, the one thing I'm sure of is that if you want success, you need to plan for it. And um, uh, I, I like planning stuff out, but I also realize that there's a lot of work to do. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And that's why 
you know, la uh, an hour ago, I was busy shooting videos for the next two weeks because I like to be prepared. Thank you for that question. Uh, Anna, Salta helps. I still need to do my Salta. Uh, Anna, I think that. Actually, I watched your video on motivating the students are from a small village and almost none of them have interest in English. Uh, like they don't like watching any English shows or English songs. They condition themselves and they cannot learn or understand any English at all. I tried many methods like starting from the basics to give them a feeling of accomplishments and stuff you talked about in your motivational, but some of them just don't want to learn. It feels so bad saying it, but that is what they say. Ju, uh, uh, who do you just, uh, uh, just don't, um, just don't give in, you know, um, it's going to be difficult, but you are going to find success. You know, um, like I was just saying, you know, you, you're not going to get success overnight. Some students will start changing as soon as you, you know, as soon as they start seeing that it's a skill and they can become better. Um, and one student, you're going to find some students that are starting to perform. Praise them and watch out for other students like they want to keep this atmosphere of we don't like English. We don't want to learn. And as soon as one of the students will start doing better, they might try and pick on that student. Don't let that happen. Get in between them, say that student is doing great. Um, guys, I want you to do the same. Nobody will say uh, I, I'm going to praise you for doing good things, not for doing bad things. You want to condition them differently. That is your job. Um, a great analogy, they call it the, the crabs in a bucket theory. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, if you've got a bucket full of crabs and you take out one crab, the other crabs are gonna cling to it and try and pull it down. So uh, if a crab tries to escape, the other crabs cling to it and pull it down. And as a teacher, you want those crabs that are trying to escape, you want to help them and uh, you want to motivate them. So it's up to you to create that environment. It might be difficult. Uh, Fokito says, I'm an enemy of translating. I always I take some minutes to explain to them why it's not good for their learning. As if they were little children, adult groups. You know what? It really works. I can imagine you doing it, Fokito. Yeah, uh, we want the students to learn it naturally because um, they will go so much quicker than somebody that just translates. Uh, I think the research is in. Letty! I need routine, especially with the virus. Yes, I think we all need need routine, you know, to to stay sane. Uh, Amar, Amar, uh, this is my very first live streaming with you, and I see that most of my questions are being answered. Sure, um, guys, uh, I try and answer all the questions. I usually do it for an hour, but every Sunday I will be here, and you are all very welcome. Uh, okay, where were we? Uh, I just missed it. Mm -hmm. Ah, here we go. Uh, I was just going down. Q King, hello. Sorry, I'm a bit late and missed last week's live stream. No problem. Uh, been busy lately. My school is shut down for a week due to one COVID positive case. Q King, I hope they, they, they fix it. It's so lovely to have you. Yeah, uh, recently there's been a spike in Korea in the cases. And it's a bit sad because all over the world, um, everyone's getting the vaccine. I don't know what your opinion is on the vaccine. But in Korea, they, they, they are kind of slow. For me, I just want to travel and enjoy life. I can't be stuck like this anymore. And I bet everybody feels the same. Play with a five-year-old. Safari is a great program. Oh, I like that. Super Safari. Okay, is that a great way? Miracosta, one day when I was at school, I took off my mask because I wanted to drink water. A student looked at me. Teacher, you look so different. Now I really know you. <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird. You know, it's difficult for me too. I could be walking past some students I see in class and I'm not sure if it's them or not. Miriam, thank you for your useful tips. I'll be waiting for your videos. Great. Uh, Nokan, how can you motivate timid young students to be more confident? Thank you. Give them easy questions. And once they give you uh, an answer, really be uh, encourage them. Say, oh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, you know. And uh, you can be a little bit over the top because they will love that enthusiasm. You want them to care about you and you want them to care about English. So you can really motivate them. Uh, just build them up for success, you know. So, oh, if they can, what color is this? Oh, it's, 
it's green yes it's green good points for you so uh, with younger students really be enthusiastic for them uh and uh, here are some resources to learn russian pinterest okay Thank you, Anna. I'll do my best to study my Russian. I'll definitely get on it this week again. After I edit these next two videos, I will get back to reading because I feel so bad when I can't read someone's name, uh, especially. Lisa, oh, they uh, they do the protagonist and settings individually. That's just half of the students do one. Okay, so each pair has to do the protagonist. Okay, that's fine. But I would, once again, I would like to motivate you to, rather than each student sit there alone and write the protagonist, rather first for them to share some ideas, put them into small groups first, and then after that, they can do their own. Uh, just an idea, but it's up to you. Uh, Mario, that's just about the two videos I saw about punishment of obedient student. And the 20 tips were very good. Only what I have to say. Thank you, Mario. Um, I hope that video helps. It, it was a very long video. It's like 30 minutes long. It's um, the secret to classroom management. Yeah, so uh, if you guys check that one out. I enjoyed that one, making it. Um, it's it's not as popular. I think the thumbnail might not be very good, but uh, I enjoyed making it and hopefully it's useful. Uh, Magdalena, for kids in my experience, they like to play bingo, lottery, and then ask questions with the vocabulary. Very nice, I like that. What is your astrological sign? Just like to plan and you like to travel. So curious. I am a Pisces. My birthday was March 18th. How about you, Anna? Uh, Samad, hi teacher. Is there any activity for grammar? No, I don't have. That's also part of the plan. I totally forgot about that. I need to make videos especially for grammar. That will be part of phase four. Uh, right now, I, I just don't have the time to, to get into grammar videos. So I'm sorry for that, uh, Samad. Um, yeah, my plan is to make grammar videos maybe only next year. I, I've got so many things I'm planning on doing. So I'll see maybe, but I think I've got too many things going on right now. So I'll have to push that apart uh, for a little bit. Uh, thanks for sharing your plan. Go for it. Sorry, that was a very long time. Hello, I have a question. How do you motivate students to learn English? Well, um, let me quickly go. I have a specific video for it. I know sometimes um, I made a lot of videos and sometimes you guys don't know the videos. So I'll just find it. Uh, motivate. Motivation. Uh, 20 ways to motivate students. Uh, let me quickly paste it for you. Um, was it Samad? Let me see. Uh, it was uh, uh, Faiza. Uh, Faiza, I made this video a while ago. I think it's a, it's a pretty good video. Is it popular? Let, let, let me check the analytics. Um, no, it's not that popular actually, but I think this is a really good video. Um, it's uh, all about how, did I pick the right one? Did I? Um, I think so. Yeah, it's the right one. So I'll paste this. This is how to motivate students 20 ways. I like that uh, video actually. Arvin, hello, Q King. American English State Resources. Good. I find using genially, uh, genuinely uh, very helpful in making materials that interested students. Very good. Um, yeah, five minutes left. I think I'm doing okay. Uh, uh, Natalia, great plan. I wish you all the best. Yes, I know it's far into the future, Natalia, but um, I'll continue every week. You'll get videos from me every week. I'll live stream. Uh, beyond that, um, just working on some strategies, you know. Salwa, I really like your speaking. I think you can be a very famous public speaker in the future. Salwa, thank you so much. Um, I Well, actually, I started this, this live stream to try and improve my public speaking. I don't think it's great yet because, you know, um, when I do most of my videos, I try and use a script. And then when I do my live stream, I just chat with you guys. So hopefully I can improve my public speaking uh, using both ways. Uh, Mrs. Abiela, I can't wait on Tuesday to get more tips for Mother's Day. Yeah, it's a very basic one. I quickly did it last week. It's more about, I think this is more about sharing resources like some of the worksheets I found. And um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a very basic one. I think you'll see it and think, oh, I understand that. But yeah, it's just a couple of ideas and yeah, it's just me sharing some websites and stuff. So it'll, it'll be useful 
uh, uh, but uh, I don't think anything groundbreaking, but it should be okay. Um, uh, Mika, yet to be here again. Good to see you, Liza. Uh, hi, Eric. It's been long days seeing you. I could join just now. Could you take me to the topic? Uh, hi, uh, Ifanya. So lovely to have you. We're just talking about everything, but we are almost finished. Two minutes left. Luza, sorry, my battery is low. I will try and join in from the PC. Okay, Luza, uh, we're going to finish soon, though. Letty, I had my first vaccination on Friday. A big um, uh, hello to, uh, yeah, a big hug to everyone in India. They are having a bad time, yes. Oh, I apologize. Uh, sorry, everyone, yeah, uh, everyone going through a tough time. Um, our our hearts and prayers are, are going out to you. Mrs. Sabiela, uh, good idea about your family. Well, you know, I have to try somehow. Hector, greetings from Mexico. Your advices are outstanding. I teach science here. Wow, thank you so much, Hector. Um, a big hug, right, Letty. Uh, Magdalena, to motivate students uh, to learn is a challenge, but sometimes they have students don't like to learn English. I usually ask them what kind of things they like to do, try to show them why it's important. They like to play video games or play instruments and start interesting, push them. Definitely. Magdalena, that is perfect. You know, you, you're getting them to share their interests. Uh, Libra, Anna, nice. Uh, so you're, you're the scale. Oh, that's what, what it was. Uh, Shurika, teacher from Jamaica. Uh, second time here. I appreciate this forum you've created. Keep it up. Uh, thank you so much, Sharika. I, I think there was a comedian uh, um, called Jimmy Carr. Uh, and he said, uh, so what his intro, his name is Jimmy Carr. And he says that uh, Jimmy Carr sounds like Jamaica in a Jamaican accent. Jimmy Carr. Uh, <laughs> and that's like a joke that stuck to me. Ah, Jimmy Carr, he's a, this English comedian. Uh, uh, welcome. Thank you so much, Sharika. That is so nice to hear. Not all good videos are popular. That is so true. Not all good videos are popular. Uh, some of the videos I think that are very useful aren't that popular. Some of the videos I don't really care for are very popular. Um, so, yeah, some of the videos I don't think are very useful. They, they get views. So that's okay. Power, work in small groups. Uh, that can help you a lot. Guys, by the way, you can put in your final comments. I'll quickly read them. Uh, work in small groups can help a lot. They can speak about movies, songs, things they don't like. And then they get more motivation to speak in English. Because students, no matter their age, like when teachers pay attention to likes. 100%. I think as teachers, you know, we should motivate our students and, you know, encourage them however we can. Uh, Natalia, uh, I like the way you speak. It is very understandable. That's what I'm going for. Thank you, Natalia. Salwa, learning based on games and activities is very interesting. Students learn language and have fun. That's very important. Hi, from Malaysia. I learn a lot from your sharing. It gives me some ideas for my teaching. Thank you, Esther. And Spyridon. Wow, what a cool name. Spyridon. Which day do you have lives? Every Sunday about this time, I in now and in an hour ago, I started. Okay, everyone, I'm going to end there. Thank you so much for joining another live stream. Um, uh, on Tuesday, every Tuesday, I release a video, so I'll quickly edit the, the Mother's Day a video. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week again. Uh, oh, I'm ca going camping next weekend, so I might have a nice tan. Hope for that. Everyone, uh, have a great one. Anna, thank you for your wonderful job. Take care. Bonnie, Esther, you've been here from the start. So glad to see other teachers from around the world. Thank you for doing these live sessions, Eric. Uh, Bonnie, Esther, thank you so much to you and everybody else for joining. Everyone, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.